So think about it because we are not here and we are looking for those you deposited love and suddenly you realize that you have, you have zero deposit. It's not late. Take a seat and give to someone. It's not late. Do it now. Do it now. Somebody should do something now. Take something and give it to someone. I mean, I mean, it's not late. Look for someone to give something to. Look for someone to give. Whether it is one thousand, you can look for someone's account. Thank you, sir. Look for someone and give it. Give something to someone. Give something to someone. It's not late. It's not late. I know you love to give to God, but God will use men to give to you. But if there are no men, you have made deposits in their life, bro. You are in trouble. Living a life where there are no deposits. I told you that love is healthy. And really, you can't say you love when you have not given. Because the Bible said God so love that He gave. So your love in the absence of giving is no love. Do a giving to someone. Don't struggle with it. Let it be part of you. Do a giving to someone. It could be the show you want to tell you. Tell the person after services belong to you. It could be your earring. You say after service, dear, this belongs to you. And listen to me. If it's a gift of love, make sure you show the person you appreciate it. Show some love to someone. Love is not only when we hug people. You hug people. You greet people. But you can't take a bullet for them. You can't make sacrifices for them. Whenever you see a lover, you see a giver. But when you see a hypocrite, you see I love you in the mouth. Nothing in the hand. Be careful of those that love you, but you can't remember what they did to you for you. Touch someone say, Can I remember what you did for me? When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. I came to church. You are doing something for yourself. You know you may not come to the house. You know you are taking a section. But the service hasn't started. And you still have the time. As they come down, they think you are rushing for another thing. You just go back to that junction and stand there. And you see a church member going that you can identify. It's a power arena, power arena. You are using your vehicle as a cab for the church. So that another brother who could not afford finding his way to church. And then you have entered the department. You are the one creating a transportation department. And listen to me. It's not until you find Pastor Frank to join a department created in a church. You can create your love can create one. Your love can create one. It's the part 
of pantheons. Because there are people who don't see love. When you show them love, they think there's something else. I remember someone coming to this church and there's a member here and he came to this church and asked for, he came to see me and said, I have this challenge, I have that challenge, I have that. And after talking about it, I discovered it's not something I have to pray about. It's a debt I can pay. I said, Pastor, there are things you can do. There are things you don't pray about. I called my secretary. I said, give it to her. I said, give it to her. She hasn't seen that kind of kindness before. I was going for a program. She came, approached me in front of my vehicle. She said, this is what you did for me. What do you want? <laughs> I mean, you don't wonder. Do people do something because they want something? If it is consistent with our nature, but when you grew up in a place where it is threatened by better life, you think that anybody that does something for you wants something. People do something because it's their nature. When the bird flies, it's the nature of the bird to fly. It's not because he wants something. Maybe you hang around some greedy lecturers in school. They only give you a mark because they want something from you. So you think everybody live like that. And I felt downgraded immediately. Like I begin to wonder. <laughs> what could be that crazy in the head of this person? To ask a question because you were helped. The Bible says, let brotherly love. A brother can pay the house rent of a sister. That is not a marriage proposal. But when you come from a very small box family of people who have shattered, battered, bombarded your heart, you think that he wants something. No, people don't want something by doing anything for you. It's their nature as Christians. Can we sit down? I need to teach you. And that is why what has shut down some of you from helping people. You now come to a point where you think that you only help those you know and those that can profit you. You are a hypocrite. And the only people you can do things for are those that can profit you. Brothers and sisters, the balance of life is that there are those of you God has blessed and there are those who don't have. So that those who God has blessed can take care of those who don't have. That is when you are creating balance. That people can get excitement when they remember your name. There's a joy that flows through the heart of people. Because they remember that brother. And grow up. The brother that picks you in front of the church at the junction to drive you down to church is not asking for a relationship. It is consistent with the Christianity to know that your progress in life is not what you acquire, but what you give to others. So when you bought that car carrying your family, you are just blessed. But the day you use it to carry Sister Mercy and carry Sister Tobe and carry Brother Ovi and carry Brother Chizzy, that's the day you became a blessing. So long as that vehicle only met your family need. You are just blessed. God said to Abraham, I will bless you and make you a blessing. God is looking for the day where it goes from being blessed to becoming a blessing. Where you get involved in other people's activity. Sammy is wedding on Saturday. You walk up to him and say, Sammy, what, what can you do with 10,000? You say, Sammy, what can you do with 5,000? If I had more than this for now, I would have given you. But now, what are you practicing? It doesn't have to be your friend. It doesn't have to be connected to you. It is the value we find in Christ Jesus that made us say you are God-like. It is your love that make us say you are God-like. A man like God is a man that does what God do for people. There's a, I'm on the final episodes. That's why I'm looking at you. To ask you, where's your earning? And your earning is only taking care of you. 
But there's no stranger that you're earning take care of. You're not a Christian. Jesus told us a story of the good Samaritan. That saw a stranger. Picked him up. Took him for treatment and lodged him in an inn. I mean he paid a hotel bill for who he doesn't know. If it is Jesus we are following. Then we should follow what he said. Brothers and sisters. You open your heart for greatness when you start loving. A day comes when you will buy a car for a total stranger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you don't care whether the person loves you or not. Whether the person speaks good of you or ill of you, it doesn't affect you. In 2011, Jesus came to me and he said to me, Never allow people's reaction or people's response to you change your actions. Men's reaction should not change you who you are. Before then, I have, I have lived all my life having to live for people and I enjoy it. While we're building up, checking out what years ago. And even before then, I live with my parents raising a lot of young people with me. Some of them had a lot of needs I can't take care of. But you know what I do? The ones that say they can't eat, they don't have food. What I do is, my food they give me in the house. I'll package it as though I bought it. And present it to them. They thought I had so much money. They didn't know I was making a sacrifice of what would go to me to them. All I needed is, is this not this person's problem? To eat. I can bear it. From my three square me. Let me minus one. To somebody. And eat two. Let me minus two and eat one. And I enjoyed it. And there was one of those people I took care of. I raised a lot of young people, male and female. One of the females is a, a family in this church then, years ago. I was still with my parents. They called, they, because I have not seen people do good for people. They called the sister. They said, you mean he hasn't told you anything? He hasn't asked for anything? You mean... Pastor just takes care of you without asking for anything. There's something you want. A little girl. Suddenly you see a little girl who was answering yes sir before. Start doing like this. I, 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 I said. I, I, I said what is it? And somebody told me. Those, uh, that family. They are poisoning. They told her that there's something you want. I said. <laughs> I said, what? I said, what I want is your welfare. But there's no poison in her heart. That it led to her by sliding. Men have made some crazy wrong decisions. Years later, she came back with three children. I won't tell her story more than that. Carrying three children. As I prophesied, because before, when I saw poison, rude, saucy, someone who was a baby before, I told her, I said, I saw a vision when you came back with three children struggling. That's, uh, that's the end of the story. She came back with three children. One on the hand, two dragging them, struggling. Married to the wrong person. Living in an uncompleted building in Lagos State, and they are back because a family poisoned hearts. I don't know. Some of you, your reaction to love is so horrible that those who want to help you are not afraid of you. I'm telling you, these are true life stories. And really, even when she came, I tried helping her. But listen to me, there are people. It's no money they need. It's association they need. Even if you give them money, you can't revive their destiny. Because the whole thing is that they have made crazy mistakes. They are in the wrong place. There's nothing you can do. I did the one I can do. After some time, I stopped. Because I couldn't walk. Poisoned by a people who have not seen love. You know, some of you have so made a conclusion of a sister 
that help you carry a bag. You think she's looking for you. She only saw a load with you. And felt I can help the brother. And help you leave the bag. It means another thing in your head. Because you are narrow-minded, local champion that think that if somebody helps you, they're asking you for something. God said that men will come to you. If you receive the word of God, if 30 people come to you and say, Brother V, we want to help you. They are not asking for anything. They are fulfilling the word. At different times over the years, I've been a preacher for years. And over the years, I've seen a lot of people that I helped that never responded back. Some became wicked with the help you gave them. You gave people wings to fly. They got to a place where you are the one that gave them wings to get to. They betray you from there. And at a point, I was with God. And I said, God, is it to stop doing good for people? He said to me. He said, you can always be what you were born to be. Don't be what other people make you become. Don't allow humans change your nature. 30 people betray you. There's one person that will remember you. So continue that goodness if it is your nature. One person is in front. It's going to remember you. Sons are born to this ministry everywhere in the world. If I say today, I point anything, I say, I need this thing. I don't need to point it from this altar. Let, let me whisper it from somewhere. Sons across the world, we get it. But do you know how long it took investing on these people? The love you invest today will save you in the future. You have to open a love account and start making deposits. The love account deposit is invest in people's life. Look for a man and a woman that should test the love of God through you. Be an answered prayer to a family this afternoon. Do you know how many times they will finish giving years ago in this ministry? Hey, I was working under my dad, and then the pastor folk who will separate them will say, This one is the one that comes to me as the resident pastor of the church. I'm the priest, it is my right to eat that blessing. As he lands in the house, he disappears. As, as Pastor Vivian, he lands in the house. If she sees that bag of rice today, she should not be surprised if she wake up three days later, and it's only one bag that is there. Because there are many that can eat but have no food. Any life you are living with your storehouse full and others are suffering, you are a fool. You know why some of you are struggling? You join Facebook to criticize that and offer. Don't you know it's stingy people that are talking about that? It's teaching people, that is nothing. It's, oh, it's nothing to give out. 10% is nothing. It's up to what we give to people. So why should I call it big thing to give it to God when I give people more than 10%? And please, if you have friends that are critics on giving, avoid them. Avoid them. Stay away from them. A friend of mine the daughter needed a bone marrow transplant. She sent me a text message. She was in one of the hospitals in the United States. She sent me a text message that this is what she's going on. And sent her account number. And told me she sent it out to a few of her friends. By the time I did uh, my own giving to that my friend, he replied me, he said, do you know how many million I'm counting since I sent out my account number? You know what? She's with the right friends. Stay with the wrong friends. Send her account number. Hey. 
She told me, he said, millions in naira, thousands in dollars, in pounds, just as she said that account number. There's no delay again to whatever. It is just waiting for an appointment. Why? Because she found the right. No, no, no. You have, you have been camping, pitching your tent with that gossiper. Someone who can kill others with her mouth. You think she will save you? You are killing yourself. Turn away from those who talk too evil against people. Their mouths are full of evil against people. Begin to build healthy friendship because of an evil day. Mm. There's always a day where the friends you have is what counts for you. There's always a day. Some of you young people, it may be your wedding. And suddenly you realize that you don't have anybody. All you are shabby girls, they take a shabby from you, they can't pay. The brothers are saying, you're going to be my groomsmen. All of them, they say, you are going to buy me suit. None of them can even get suit for themselves. Look at the trouble you got yourself into. You are building an ungodly association with wrong friends. When you approach people, see their hearts, don't see their face. If that heart does not have honor for love, depart from such hearts. If it's a heart full of bitterness and criticism, depart for your own sake. The future is too big. Men are walls. Men with value means you have solid walls around you. You have to first become one solid wall too. Because best of the same feather flock together. Because no, no, no good man wants a gossip around him. So you have to be a solid wall. Because everybody you are trying to, listen to me, Friendship doesn't just happen. You can make a choice for me to be your friend, but I may not want you as my friend. Remember, it is you that needs something. You are the one that need me. Me, what I need was James. What you need is me. I need James. So I will more of invest on James. But there's, there are values you will show me. It's like bank cutting a client. There are values you will show me. James can be there and I will come for you. That is why I say build personal values first before you start looking for friends. People easily live your life. The New Testament is, listen, Christians are the most dangerous people because we are lovers. In the book of John 13, 34, he said, new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. So we are dangerous because we can love. We can love. And because we can love, everything is attracted to us. I remember the God kind of love is love unconditional, not affection. It has affection, but it's love unconditional. Don't think it's affection, it's emotion. So when the emotion is, when you've, you have just so much affection, but there is no volume to your love. All you have is affection. You're like somebody who you sent to buy meat and he looks at fat and he said, give me fat, it is too much. But that's not meat. What you bought are fat. You throw it into the, into, the, into the pot and it melts off and turns to oil. There are people whose love life is affection. You are good because you did good to them. I'm talking about look for people with hearts of gold. People that you can't find grudge. People that you find forgiveness in. That is why be careful of people that have different things against people. The moment you join the choir, they tell you, be careful of this person. No? Be careful. Of, they are the only saints. Be careful of them. 
I, I would not have wanted to tell you because I know in this church now, don't go and tell pastor, but I'm, don't, I'm the only one telling you, be careful of that man. It's a love. Not everybody will react well. I've housed different kind of people in my house. I've housed the good, the bad, and the ugly. But that will not stop me from housing people. Because you have shelter. The day you have an empty room and somebody is looking for a room and that person is a good person and you say you don't have a room, God will count it against you. It's what the Bible said. I didn't say it. Christianity is God helping humanity. You have to know that. As a matter of fact, when a Christian builds a house, you also build a BQ. For strangers, you may help. Because it is not normal that just you and your wife and your children are living in the house. It's not normal. You are blessed. You are not a blessing. And your big troubles are those you call your, you, you, you call yourself a father and mother too, but they don't think you are their father and mother. So in their head, you are not. So they are not going to give you that honor. They have their policies inside your house. Have I had a friend people like that? I had a child living with me in the same house. My, my wife was into bridals then. And she will be directing people. She was working with my wife, directing people to another person. <laughs> Inside this her house. And everything she was taught, she was taught by my wife. But she has another person she directs people to. So there are people you are going to call mother, but they are not going to call you mother. But don't stop loving. There are people you are going to call father. But they are not going to call you father. Don't stop loving. Later she was no longer in my house. Years later she called one day. Daddy. I called. I said come to my house. No, no, nothing against me. You are, you are the one that lost. I still love you. You are my child, and you may be online now hearing me. Oh, it doesn't change anything, except you don't know Pastor Sam. And I love you. And I can sacrifice anything for her to you know. This is where I am. But I will still say the truth to her. And that is why I'm not apologetic speaking online like this. Because I want you to learn. That what you are saying people did to you that you can't love. People have done worse to people and they still love. I told her, I say, you are still my daughter. Anytime you feel like coming to the house, you can call. Don't stop loving. There are people you are going to give your salary. They will still say you are wicked. You see, everything I asked him, you know how much he gave me. I know he has more. They didn't know that what you gave them was your, your monthly bread. Not daily bread, your monthly bread. <laughs> but I feel you are wicked that you could have given more. Have you not given people the, all that you have at a time and they say that it's not going to be enough, add more to it. And they don't understand where you are coming from. Because they think that big car means big cash in the account. <laughs> are you still here? We are going to read the Bible. So that some people don't hold me and criticize me for not reading the Bible. Well, remember the sermon on the mountain. Jesus preached and he didn't read anywhere. 
Because the word that I speak to you, that not just about the book, it's about the spirit of the book talking to you. First John chapter 2, verse 5. Glory to God. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Verse number 6. He that saith he abided in him, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Verse 7. I could go on here, but I'm checking my time. Let's go to First John chapter 3 from verse 11. I have to appropriate my time. But this is the message that he had from the beginning. That we should do what? This is the message. This is the fulfillment of all the commandments. Who do you hate in this church? Who will you not dance with? We should love one another. Look around. Who do you hate so much? Who do you hate the character? Okay, because I have to say it pleasantly. Because I know if I say, who do you hate now? You say, nobody. But you know, I don't like that brother's character. I don't like that sister's character. So let's deal with it. Why is he irritating you too much? Is he your character? <laughs> it's not your character now. The person that have it as a character is not complaining. <laughs> so can you just manage to love him, love her like that? Someone that grew up with it. And you met the person, he has been over 30 years with this character. He has mastered the character. And now he met you for six months. You think he can change in six months? Just love him, bro. Love him. He's growing, love him. I was talking one of my daughter and the husband in the office. I said, I have nothing against both of you. You are children. There's a way you program your mind you can love people. I said, you are children, you are growing. So your mistake you make as children. So I don't have anything against you people. Hallelujah. How many of you parents have your children not offended? Did you suddenly hate them? Your children lied against you, is not? They even lied with your name. Huh? I mean, your kids. They lied with your name. Okay, you don't know. They told their friend in the school. I mean, look at you. You are here. But you never hated them. You see the bond you have for them. You see that unconditional love you have for your child. Share it with me. Love me like that. Don't make me too conscious of perfection when I'm with you. Because I'm afraid you will leave me. That's a problem we have. That's why you don't have true friends around you. Because all the people around you are too. That's too conscious. You went out with, with him. Now he's forcing himself to use fake and knife. <laughs> to eat stash. <laughs> and it's a battle. It's a battle. Why is he doing it? So that he can be in your class. Can you accept my class? The brother is trying to cut a mala with fucking knife. <laughs> he's trying to, he's, he's doing his best. He wants to impress you, he's doing his best. I 
I love people to be normal. I told you the story of one time where I, 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 I traveled to Israel. And there's this, uh, this man who was, we went to eat in, and they, they gave us an African food that day. And they said they're going to give us swallow. After two weeks without swallow. So many of us were like excited. And we washed our hands. And this man, they say he's a director in his office. Those days. So he came in there, and he's still forming director. So he sat as director, and we all washed our hands. And he asked for fork and knife. So they gave him. We started eating. We're all just in and enjoying the food. We're done. As I was going out, he asked me, please, where did you wash your hand? <laughs> Because he's struggling there. He doesn't know how to. He, could, he couldn't pick it. The soup is dry soup. As he tries, he goes. <laughs> he asks me, please, where did you people wash your hand? <laughs> so, direct on the direction now. <laughs> you know what people tend to? People tend to be under pressure. Because they are afraid you may stop loving them. But can you be that kind of person that I cannot be afraid you will stop loving me? Especially now that we are all in this household of faith. That's what the Bible called brotherly love. It's a fraternal love. A love for people of the same fraternity. Because before we can even help others outside, we should be able to love ourselves. To that point that I'm free around you. I, don't, I know you won't stop coming to church because I became free around you. Because the man that God uses is a man before God used him. He may still have his mistakes. Just the way the deacon can have his mistake. Listen, there's no, there's no position in the church that the person seems to be a man. You have to get it into your head. You agree. That the security man is a security man. The man of God is also a man. So you accept it. The man's side is always imperfect. But can I be free with you? It's easier to watch a man of God from television. But where familiarity and problem begins is when closeness comes. If you don't work as a protocol with him, you will never have a problem. After a finish from distance, go. He's the representative of God. But what about the day you see him swallowing a goosey soup? Do you just realize that the representative of God is is a fufu? Suddenly, you are realizing you are realizing. And you are realizing. That familiarity is supposed to help you love him more. It can also destroy you. Remember what independence did to Africa? Mm. I hope you know. That the countries in Africa that got their independence early stayed undeveloped. Travel from West Africa and go to South Africa. That the independence was till 1990 something. Oh, beautiful. It's like Europe. You can't differentiate South Africa from Europe. Because they allow their masters to finish the work. West Africa, we know. Second World War was our problem. The Battle of Burma suddenly. The whites became weak. The black men with the fufu they ate were stronger. They helped carry their master. When they came back, they said they are normal people. Stop being afraid of them. More you have strength. But do you know that there are different types of strength? Physical strength and mental strength are not the same. The strength to fight and strength to make money are not the same. No. <laughs> There are so much to say to you. 
my children in the Lord. There are so much to say to you. But lower your standard so that you can accept people into your standard. If you are around me, there's nobody that is not okay. And when you talk to me, I'll say, leave him. He will learn. And you wonder, why is it? Because I realize that before all of us got to where we are today, there were people that tolerated us. And if the world is full of tolerance, we'll have more people go up. Look at what Jesus told us and we ran up. First John chapter 3 verse 11. But this is the message that you have heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. Verse 12. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. When you see yourself uncomfortable, envious of another person's success, be careful of yourself. When you are too much in competition, be careful of yourself. Whenever people tell you something about themselves and you also want to say about yourself, be careful of yourself. When they tell you, oh, this brother, do you know where he graduated from and he's celebrating? No, you say, okay, also, I need to tell you about my own. Be careful of yourself. You are, you are in trouble with Cain, the spirit of Cain. Verse number 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Is anybody struggling to love you? Your life is a very boring life. You want evil to happen to me so that you will be happy. Maybe that's what you are looking for in that brother's life. It's a very boring life. What will you gain from my death? Since you want evil to happen, at least the worst that can happen is for me to die so that you can live. What will you gain from it? think it should go down so that you can prove that you are anointed. What anointing is that? By a witch. Leave him to stay. Let your mocker stay alive while you go up. And develop a big heart to forgive. Verse 15. Who so hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. So every time you live in hate, you don't have Zoe. Zoe only walks in love. Verse 16. Perceive we the love of God because He laid down His life for us. We ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So, anybody that tell you that Jesus has died for everybody, no, look at it. We ought to do what? Lay down our lives for the brethren. Put your life on the line for another person. Verse 17. But who also had his, this was good and seeing his brother have need and shutted up his powers of compassion from him, had well let the love of God in him. Eighteen, the last verse. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. love is not enough if you can share with me. Every time keep depositing that little 
to that love. Give people gifts, not because you know much about them. Help people feel love. Help people feel special. Help people feel comfortable. And you know what the Holy Ghost begins to do with you? He begins to use you for people. You don't even need to be on the altar. From the back, you have influence over so many people. Because you are doing it over and over. You look at that person that sang in the church. You walk up to that person after the service. And you say, you were a blessing to me. Please manage this 2,000. It mustn't be too big. Leave the myopic head to think there's something else. You are helping yourself. People that were not loved always react to love. They think that love is hypocritical because they have never been loved before. People that grow up in a loving environment see it as a way of life. Bow your head and give God praise. Trust that you've been blessed by this broadcast. Usher with us at Salvation Gospel Mission International Headquarters, number 10 to Ways Up Street of Naval Sereda, Saba Delta State, Nigeria. Salvation Gospel Mission International.